Hello everyone, this is Lars uh, from Colibrio. Uh, today I uh, thought I would show you uh, something I made, which uh, is a demonstration of uh, cool stuff you can do with natural language processing and annotation layers in Colibrio. It's, uh, annotation layers is our uh, construct which makes it possible to, for you to add stuff on top of your existing publications, uh, such as hotspots, for example, uh, or highlights, bookmarks, uh, notes, whatever, basically. Uh, and in this case, uh, I have used it to, uh, together with uh, a natural language processing uh, library called Compromise. Uh, and uh, using Compromise, I parse the entire uh, contents of the book and, and let Compromise um, categorize the, the words in the book, basically, uh, to find out what word classes uh, the different words belong to, like nouns, ver verbs, and adjectives. So without further ado, let me move over to, uh, to Chrome. So here, here we are in Chrome, and the uh, the reading system that you're seeing now is my vanilla reader, which is uh, <laughs> a really simple implementation of the Colibri reader framework that only uses HTML and CSS uh, and some JavaScript as well, of course. But um, it's as you can see, I only use ASCII characters and stuff, or sorry, Unicode characters instead of images and so on, because why not? Uh, and uh, as you can see now that I uh, uh, flip through the book, you can see that you have these um, underlined words. And these are actually uh, the, the orange ones are actually adjectives. And the, as you can see, the blue ones are nouns and the green ones are verbs. And I've also added a, an extra little neat feature, uh, which is pop-ups that just show you the, the word class. And these are actually, uh, because it's a vanilla reader, right? I needed to implement them using only CSS and pseudo elements. So uh, that's how I did that stuff. But yeah, and uh, in, uh, I don't know how this works in other reading systems, but in, in our fine reading system, that was, I mean, this is, just too simple, almost. So, uh, because of the the magic of uh, annotation layers. So let me uh, first of all move over to VS Code to show you how I, how I did this. So um, what I have set up are is a specific uh, annotation layer. You can have as many layers as you want. Basically, I, I say that annotation layers are like the layers that you have on Google Maps. You can turn on and off like uh, traffic or, or roads or borders or whatnot. And it's the same thing here. You have layers uh, on top of your book that uh, point out specific things or add interaction or whatever. And in this case, I added uh, a new layer, which I called uh, annotation layer grammar. Um, and Creating a new annotation layer is really, really simple. Uh, you have the reader view, which uh, actually hosts the, the book. And the reader view has something called create annotation layer. And along with that, you just uh, send along the moniker that you, or name or label that you want to use for your, uh, for your layer. And then you, in return, you get this reference to, to the layer. And you, when you have that layer, you can add specific options. In this case, I set uh, my own uh, CSS class name. And I also uh, set engine events enabled to true, which means that I get events for stuff like uh, annotation click, annotation pointer enter, pointer leave. Uh, you can also, you also have an event when you uh, open the context menu in your browser. There are multiple other stuff uh, or other events, like you get specific events for when uh, a specific annotation gets into view. That's, for example, how you turn on like a bookmark uh, 
uh, feature or something when you see that a bookmark has entered the view. Uh, if you want to alert a screen reader that uh, an annotation has entered the view, you can also use these events for that. But the fun stuff is actually starts here. So I have this method called um, annotation layer grammar populate. And here I loop through all of the all of the documents in the EPUB in this case. Um, so uh, for each what we call reader document, which is a document when it's uh, ingested into the reading system so, so that we've added a, a bit more of uh, more data to it basically. Um, so for each reader publication that, oh, sorry, reader document that is in the reader publication spine, I have my own class that I made to wrap the compromise library, which is called the NLP metadata, uh, metadata factory. And if we go to that class, it just takes the document as uh, a parameter. It also takes a tag filter. This will uh, show you in a bit. I will show you in a bit what that does. So um, here you can see that um, now I also get a chance actually to explain uh, about our content block tree. Uh, when we ingest any uh, sort of publication, be it uh, an EPUB or, or a PDF, but especially true for EPUBs, of course, uh, we take the document object model and turn that into uh, a JavaScript uh, or TypeScript represent representation of um, of all the elements and all the uh, attributes on those, those elements and the elements or nodes, uh, content, text contents. And we put them in this uh, alternative uh, formats independent uh, model or tree. So in this case, instead of, uh, you know, having to, to work with Format specific stuff like the document object model, or in PDF in the PDF case, the the the, the, the version of, of that in PDF. You have this abstract, nice way of, of uh, uh, traversing this tree. So the first thing that happens is that for this specific document, we get the content block tree, and then we create a walker which will help us traverse the tree. Uh, and the walker is populated by uh, all the content blocks which is in the tree. So a content block represents, uh, let's say, in, in HTML, um, it, it represents like a paragraph or a table or an image or whatnot, uh, a semantic um, piece of content, basically. Um, and then I create this new container object, which will be returned by this factory and which we will use later when we create our annotation layer. Um, and then I just add some metadata to, or some, uh, some data to this metadata object. This metadata object actually is kind of simple, right? It's, um, it, let's see where we have it. Yeah, sorry, here it is. So it's just it just keeps the ID of the document. I don't use that, but I thought it would be useful. And then we have the metadata items, which are the, the different, in this case, content blocks, and in the end, the different terms that a content block uh, contains. And the terms are the, the compromise uh, term for a word. <laughs> Uh, so a term has a bunch of stuff on it, like the, the text content. It has tags, and the tags are actually uh, like an enum that tells you if it's a ver verb, a noun, uh, adjective, if it's uh, possessive, whatever, you know, all the grammar stuff. <laughs> and then we also get uh, the offsets. Uh, for that specific word or term within the text content. And this is going to prove to be very important for us later on. Anyways, uh, so um, we start the walker by getting the first uh, item, the first block from the from the tree. Uh, first of all, we see if there is if it's empty. So uh, and but as soon as we get into this while loop, we get the first item in the tree. Uh, we see if we actually got something meaningful. And if we did, 
we get the content location from that specific block. And the content location is uh, where the we have something called a locator in Colibrio, and a locator is the address to something, whereas the content location is the actual location within the content. So if you have an address to a house, that is the locator, and the content location, the location would be the actual house. Um, so we get the content location from uh, the block. We also get the text content. If we have text content, uh, I call the NLP uh, library, which in this case is compromise. You could use something else, but compromise was nice and easy to work with. I feed that my text content, and then I just serialize the result of the analysis, the processing that uh, compromise did back to JSON with some extra options. Uh, first of all, I tell it that I need the offsets. I need it to tell me the start offset for each word. Um, and I also say it to not uh, strip away white space. Uh, so it cannot normalize white space. It's supposed to keep the white space. And for each term, I also need the offset. And then uh, I simply uh, initialize this uh, terms object here. I think you will see how I use this later. And then for each uh, item in the result set, which would be all the, the sentences basically, and then the terms, which are the words, I, I loop through these. So first I go through all the, let's say sentences probably, that's probably what it divided it uh, by. And then uh, for each of the words, I uh, have this filter. Remember, I have this filter here, tags filter. So I just say that if, um, if the tag is included in the filter, then it should also be included in the results app that is sent back to, to the reading system. So it, it, um, we have this Boolean here, Boolean, where we uh, see if we should add it. Um, if we should add it, we just get uh, the locator, if you remember, that's the address to, to the location. Um, and we get, we know that the, the, the word is in a specific content block, remember, because we're looping through the content blocks. So from the current block, get the locator, but get the locator more specifically from the start offset of the term, you know, the, the, the position of the word within the string, basically. And also, up to this point, from, uh, to the length of the word. And this is kind of magic. This is a very strong point in the Calibrio reader framework. That you can get very exact range locators from, from wherever in the publication using this. These simple tools, they are so super powerful. This, uh, you can send this to, to the other side of the world because this, you can serialize this into what's called a, a CFI. Nepub CFI, and this will, um, no matter what reading system opens this, they will be able to find this specific range, this specific word, uh, wherever it is, uh, it is in the publication. So we get this locator, and uh, if we find the locator, we just uh, add it to the term, uh, and then we push it to this uh, this collection. And then once we, uh, for every, uh, you know, new term we add, or sorry, for uh, every new, uh, what, what was it called? Uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, for <laughs> each of these uh, content blocks, we push them into this uh, array that we are going to return uh, when we're done. So this is, this is it. Not too much code, right? It's, uh, it's, a, it's not even 100 lines. And what it does is to actually go through the entire, uh, uh, for each document, this is run, and we actually uh, get um, metadata back that tells us which word class each of the words in the publication is. And not only that, we have a specific location for each of these words, so we know exactly where they are in the book. So this is what's returned. Uh, so once the, we have processed 
and as you can see uh, the list of, uh, of uh, tags that I want to pick out are uh, verbs, nouns and adjectives. Uh, when I when uh, this is returned to me in form of a, in the form of a serialized JSON uh, object, I just uh, loop through these again, and for each of them, I see uh, what kind of um, uh, what kind of um, uh, sorry what kind of term it is. If it's a noun, I set the class of the annotation. Um, sorry, what I did first. Sorry, I, I created this uh, e I reader view annotation options uh, interface, and it has a bunch of uh, stuff that you can add to it, like container class name, which is the container for the entire annotation, uh, container style, which is if you want to add specific inline basically uh, CSS style, position class name, position style are for uh, positions like bookmarks that don't that aren't a range. Uh, but they are just a position, a point, basically, before or after something. And then you have the range class name and range style. And range class names are basically what we're using now because it's a range of content. It doesn't need to be text. It can be a range of elements. But this is what's going to be applied to every range uh, within a container. So what I do now is just, the reason that I'm doing this is just to add, to be able to add a specific class CSS class basically uh, based on what um, uh, tag, if it's a noun, verb, or an adjective, adjective. And when I've done this, I create a new annotation on the annotation layer grammar. Um, I say that it's a vanilla reader term uh, that's going to be hosted in the because the annotation layer can also help you store the data for the annotation at runtime, which is kind of handy. So you don't need to have a map between the annotation and the annotation layer, uh, the annotation data and the annotation layer. Um, so, and then uh, to create an annotation, the only thing you really need is the locator. Uh, the term in this case is the vanilla reader term. So that is just the, the data that I want to uh, include uh, as custom data to the annotation. And then I set the options. And the options are, in this case, the only thing we do is to set the container class name. Uh, so we set that here. That's it. Done. That's all we need to do. Isn't it amazing? Uh, so, and then I... Don't use any of these. I just added them for you know for demonstration purposes. Uh, the only other thing that you uh, that does the whole pop-up thing imaging are actually down here. Uh, so remember that I added the class name. This is actually <laughs> this is actually the only thing I did. I I said that the layer. I didn't show you this, but you can also set uh, style options for the entire layer. So for the grammar layer, I said that uh, it has a mixed blend mode of multiply, which means that the anything you put on top of it, um, top of the publication, with, will use the multiply multiply blend mode, which actually just um, blends the overlay with the page content in a way that the page content isn't obscured, like it would be if you used opacity, for example. Anyway, and I say that for every reader view annotation, this is our uh, Colibrio's own uh, map, you know, the this default class that we add to an annotation. I say for all the annotations within the grammar layer, uh, we add a pseudo element, which is placed before the annotation, which uh, has to, you know, inline block, uh, position absolutes, uh, and all of this stuff. And it also has a transition, um, which it transitions for 3.3 seconds. And then we add the actual, uh, sorry, it's supposed to. Let's see. Well, there is a, uh, we have this uh, transition. Usually it says which property to transition, right? Uh, well, anyways, what happens is that it trans <laughs> it transitions the opacity property up to one. 
uh, and it also um, fades it in so that it looks like it comes from from the bottom to the top. Remember, I can I can show you again the effect. Uh, I need to go over to OBS. Okay, do you remember the effect here if I did this? The only thing that happens is we have a CSS transform that fades it from opacity zero to opacity one and also uh, transitions the, the bottom property so that it looks like it kind of slides up. Uh, that's that's it. Uh, yeah, sorry. I also add, of course, b depending on if it's a noun, verb, or whatever. I also add specific background colors and also specific content, of course. So this is uh, actually uh, what does the magic, so to speak, uh, content-wise. It's if it's a verb, it's it adds the the contents of verb. It sets the background to green, the color to white. Uh, so, and this is my sp spinning ice cream. Don't worry about that. You haven't seen my spinning ice, ice cream, but there, there is a spinning ice cream in the vanilla reader. Uh, yeah, so believe it or not, I mean, the it's not much code, right? I could, it's, uh, I think in, in total, it might be just uh, 200 lines of code or something. Not even that, perhaps. And you have this wonderful thing imaging. Uh, so yeah, I mean, and this is, I didn't hack anything. It's just, just you know, this is Calibrio reader framework. It's, it surprises even me very often. So it was a pleasure speaking to you guys and I hope you enjoyed this. Um, it was fun doing. It was fun coding and it was fun recording. So thank you.